the arts are a reflection of the world we live in. And there are people living lives that other people know nothing about. And you can go to a display at a museum of pottery and understand how people lived 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago, see a painting and see something that you know, was the equivalent of a photograph today. Uh, you learn about how other people live. You better understand how society's changed and what's happened with people. And artists often don't censor themselves to fit you know, a specific narrative of what rules are in schools or whatever. You can see true life. I lived in New Jersey and went, was taken by my parents when I was about 12 to see a musical called 1776 on Broadway. And I discovered over a year or two later that there was a job where you got paid to go to the theater and write what you think about it. So I sort of aimed my uh, studies, my, chose my college for the opportunities to learn how to be a critic. I don't know what it was. You know, was a lot of people go to the theater or go to the ballet and they want to perform, they want to dance, they want to act. And I did that kind of thing in high school, but I really, I liked writing and I liked being able to talk about what I experienced. And it took a while, but actually happened a lot sooner when I moved down here. They created a job at the Sarasota Herald Tribune for a full-time theater critic. And I was here at the right time, in the right place, and been doing it ever since. I think you can trace the history of the arts to, in Sarasota to John Ringling and the Ringling Brothers moving the winter quarters for the circus to Sarasota, and which led to artists and performers and all sorts of people coming here. I know there had been people coming here as, art, as painters and things before because of the light and the, and the nature. Uh, but Ringling Brothers needed artists to uh, create the designs for their shows and the performers, and that brought in a community of people here. Even if it was seasonal, it led to the creation of an art organization that's now Art Center Sarasota, which I believe is the oldest arts organization in Sarasota. It led to the creation of the what was once called the Players, is now the Players Center, which is the oldest performing arts organization in Sarasota, and I think the second oldest in Florida. And everything grew out of that. You know, one thing leads to another, and one organization, you know, one theater starts, and then other people want to do other things related to that, so they go off and do their own thing. The Ringling hired a director named Chick Austin, Everett Chick Austin, and he just expanded on the collection that John Ringling left uh, in his estate, and one of the major things he did was bringing over the Oslo Theater from Italy, uh, where it, which provided a future home for opera and theater. And so the Oslo Repertory Theater got its start there uh, in the early 60s. Uh, and the opera started around the same time. They brought in touring operas. It was a very small little theater. And, and what is now known as the historic Oslo Theater, or the Hat, uh, you know, it was an intimate space. It was small productions of opera. The Oslo Theater started as a uh, summer program doing restoration comedies with students from FSU, Florida State University in Tallahassee, who came down here. And it grew in popularity, and they created a year-round theater. And so the opera started there. And eventually, the Saras what became the Sarasota Opera had raised the money to buy what's now the Sarasota Opera House, the former Edwards Theater, which was a movie theater and where Elvis performed once. Uh, and so they've grown. And the opera gave birth, sort of, to the Sarasota Ballet, uh, because they sponsored a series of touring performances by other companies and then developed their own. And the orchestra, meanwhile, uh, got started, the Sarasota Orchestra and has been going for more than 60 years. So it's all these things sort of feeded off the Ringling being here uh, and made a lot of those things possible. And I think you could attribute a lot of that to Chick Austin. I think Sarasota likes to think of itself as the arts capital of Florida. And because of the size of the community, which is relatively small when you think about Tampa or Jacksonville or Miami, we have a lot. And the Oslo was the first state theater. Uh, you know, we have a, a, a pretty world-class orchestra and a world-class opera company, a regional opera company. And the fact that we have all these things in the ballet and you know, a half a dozen theaters, both professional and uh, amateur, is 
I think, very significant. And it's what distinguishes Sarasota from just about every other, at least, West Coast uh, beach town uh, in the state. Besides being a creative hub, the arts is a huge business here. It's, uh, I believe, the fifth largest employer in Sarasota County. Uh, people who are involved on stage, people who are curators, people who are painters, designers, set builders, musicians, all live here and they all contribute you know, to the economy. And then all the money that comes in from tourism and from people who are here as winter residents or, or year-round residents uh, all bring in money. And they contribute because you go to dinner beforehand or you may come in for a weekend and stay in a hotel. So it is a, it's a big business and, that's, and partly why the county, Sarasota County, supports arts through a tourist tax money. So Sarasota County, like most places, charges a bed tax, a, ho a tax on hotel stays and rentals. And a portion of it, I think maybe a quarter of a penny, goes toward the arts. Some of it goes to beach renourishment, some goes to uh, supporting tourism. And so there are 30 to 50 nonprofit arts organizations that apply uh, through the Arts Alliance of Sarasota County for funding. And each year, the county awards more than a million dollars, at least in recent years, toward the arts. And a lot of a lot of years, that is more than the state of Florida awards to hundreds of organizations across the state. I think the arts are great for tourism in Sarasota. It is what distinguishes Sarasota from every other beachfront community along the Gulf Coast. If you just want to go to the beach or go play golf, you can go anywhere up and down the coast. But here, you get all those things, plus all this opera and ballet and dance and theater and it it is what draws a lot of people here because they want that cultural connection, especially people who come from bigger cities. You know, when they retire, they want to have a, a taste of what they left behind. I think arts are important in education because they teach you a lot of skills that you may not get if you're just taking math classes or science classes or history or whatever you're studying because it's, we're a world and all these people are creating things, whether it's theories about, you know, how plants developed or whatever it might be, there's a way of including art. You have an artist who's painting flowers and you know, what, are those, what are those paintings show you that a scientist can study from? There's, there are botanical artists who create things that have been studied by scientists for, for generations. Theater is a reflection of who we are as a people. Dance is a way people can express emotions that can't be shared with words. Opera is a way of expressing emotions that are too much just for casual dialogue or casual song. So all those things factor into who we are in, the, in a society here and you know, broaden it out around the world. And I think it's important for, for kids to learn those things from a young age, makes it, makes it part, of their, part of their life and hopefully elevates who we are. I have friends who come to Sarasota for a visit and are amazed by all the things that we have to offer and all the things I get to write about, like the Sarasota Opera, the Sarasota Ballet, and Sarasota Contemporary Dance for the dance programs. There's the Sarasota Orchestra, the Venice Symphony. And then you go to the theater, you go to the Oslo Repertory Theater, the five stages of Florida Studio Theater. And there was one when I started covering uh, the arts here. Uh, West Coast Black Theater Troupe, over 20 years old, the Urbanite Theater in downtown Sarasota. And then you go to the community theaters and there's the Player Center for Performing Arts, which is the oldest performing arts organization in Sarasota and Venice. There's the Venice Theater, uh, which has been around for more than 60 years. It's a, and then there's dozens of smaller organizations, music, dance, doing all sorts of things. Arts Center, and the Arts Center Sarasota, you can't ignore, which is the oldest arts organization in town. And everybody can find something that they want to see at the Van Wazel Performing Arts Hall, which offers everything from symphony concerts to theater to comedians to co country music and is all housed in this beautiful purple shell building right on the bay. The art scene has diversified over the years. I mean, it has been, it's a white community, white majority community, but we've seen the development of the West Coast Black Theater Troupe, which has just exploded in popularity so much that they raised enough money to build a theater and pay it off before it practically opened. Uh, there is a new organization called Criarte Latino, which is developing programs for Spanish speakers and bilingual uh, speakers that's just a few years old and is growing and getting a little bit more recognition. So there's, there are efforts to have more 
uh, offerings. And then other major organizations are trying to do things that appeal to a broader cross-section of people. Film has become a much bigger thing in Sarasota over the last two decades. Larry Thompson, the president of Ringling College, has greatly expanded the filmmaking possibilities there. Their students get internships and they get to work with a variety of actors and directors who have been coming down to Sarasota to work with them. Some of their projects end up, well, some students have had uh, films nominated for Academy Awards, a lot of animated shorts. And some of those films get shown at the Sarasota Film Festival, which has been around for more than 20 years and grew out of what was originally a Sarasota French Film Festival, an unlikely thing to happen here. So every year for 10 days or so, we get dozens of movies and filmmakers coming in and showing off what they've got, that, the movies we might not see otherwise. And then there's the Sarasota Film Society, which has for decades been showing all the, you know, the offbeat movies uh, that wouldn't get shown most likely at the multiplexes that we have. I think one of the big issues for the future of Sarasota is what's going to happen to the arts as the older uh, philanthropists die off. The arts attract an older audience here. And one of the things I've been looking into for a variety of stories is how are we going about getting younger people involved? And some of it is time, you know, young people have obligations with their jobs, with kids, and taking those kids to soccer games. It's expensive to go to, to see an opera or concerts or a theater. Uh, so I wondered if there's a light switch. Does something happen when you retire that all of a sudden now you're going to go to things? And I worry that without a lot of exposure when people are young in school, that's another reason why arts education is important. It, without that exposure, are you going to be as inclined to partake of all the things that are offered here when you get older and have the time and then the money. Arts organizations build support by getting you to come to whatever it is that they do, whether it's an art show or a performance at a play, and you go and you enjoy it, and then maybe you become a subscriber. And then as a subscriber, if you have the money, maybe you become a donor, and maybe as you get older and have more of uh, money to spend, you become a major donor. And that's how they've thrived, because there is a lot of generosity in this community. And I wonder what's going to happen with younger generations. Do they have that same feeling, that same connection to these organizations, so that in 20, 30, 50 years, will they have that uh, an equivalent amount of support? A lot of arts organizations are working to attract younger people. The uh, Sarasota Opera has this De Capo Society that's appealing to people under 40 to get them to be with people their age and feel comfortable going to performances and they get discounts and receptions. The Sarasota Ballet has started something called the Releve Society, which is a similar kind of operation. Uh, the Sarasota Orchestra is trying to do more family kinds of programs. The, uh, the Oslo Theater has started a program where parents can drop their kids off for a theater activities while they go to a performance, a date night uh, kind of thing, I think is what they're calling it. And so they're doing something to appeal to younger people to get that connection started. And it may not be constant, it may not be every show, but it's something even once a year, something gets built into your life and develops into something more later on. You can't stop change. It's going to happen no matter what. And it, it's something that everybody is afraid of. There were, there were complaints about the potential for the new Performing Arts Center. There was a lot of uh, petitions against the Ringling Bridge. People didn't want the Van Wezel Performing Arts Hall when it was built in the early 70s. So there's all this history of change here that people eventually learn to love. And we're sitting here in this beautiful Sarasota Art Museum that used to be Sarasota High School. And people wanted contemporary art, and they raised money over 15 years to be able to turn this building into an art museum. And here it is, having these amazing touring exhibits and bringing a new life to a building that was such a part of this community so we can appreciate I never was in Sarasota High School. I didn't live here when it was open. And now I can have a sense of what it must, must have been like to go to school here. I've lived here since 1984, and I am constantly amazed and surprised by how much there is here now versus what there was before. I could be out every single night going to a museum, going to an art gallery, going to a play or a dance piece or the opera. And, and I used to do that almost every night. 
I do the same thing every day. I write feature stories, I write reviews, but every day I am changed because of what I saw last night or what I saw last week, which informs and alters. I mean, the one thing I love about theater is that it's alive and it's different every night, even though the people on the stage are saying the same words and making the same movement, but everything shifts because there's different people in the audience. We're bringing our thing. And I am reacting differently each night because everything I see and experience feeds into who I am and who I'm becoming. And I love that about this town, that there is so much to explore, that I can go relax and sit on the beach if I ever find the time and just chill out and then go to, to see a show and feel differently than if I hadn't gone there. It, it is, the arts world can change us, can make us better people, and maybe inspire somebody to try to create, and I think we are only going to grow the more people are creating. 20 years from now, I I'm hoping that Sarasota will just continue to evolve and grow and expand, that there will be even more happening here, more variety, more diversity in art forms, in the people creating the art and the people attending the art. I think about how much has changed since I started uh, covering the arts here in the mid-1980s. It is unbelievable the amount of growth, how much more there is to see and do and to write about. And I think if we keep supporting it, that kind of growth will continue.